Welcome to an epiphany with Tiffany. My name is Tiffany and I've just had an epiphany. This podcast is all about Christian singles looking for community. Christian dating can be quite a mess these days. I'll share stories from my guests and practical tips for successful love. Dating shouldn't be this hard, right? So grab your favorite snack or drink and curl up with this episode and you might just have an epiphany of your own. Your response for how can a guy be more intentional when he is is interested just made me laugh like that. So I don't know. Let's just start there and see where this conversation goes. (laughs) All right. What did I say again? I can't like I can't look it up while I'm on my phone now. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, So it says tell the woman with three explanation points. (laughs) I'd like to get to know you. I'd like to take you on a date. I'd like to call you. I'd like to video chat you. It's not that hard. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like so many guys, well, I think it depends on the context, right? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it has been a combination of like, a lot of my dating that I have done has been um, online dating. Um, Some has been distant, but like a lot of it has been more local. But um, I found like a common thread between a lot of men is that they just don't articulate that they're actually interested. So um or they don't know how to. So the easiest thing, like, honestly, I feel like is the most helpful for any woman is for them just to be like, I really like you. I'd like mm-hmm. to see you again, like that kind of thing. So um, yeah, a lot of it has just been for me, like, I think just frustration wise has been, does this guy even like me? Does he want to see me again? Like, I don't know. One guy I dated, um, I had to like pull it out of him. I finally had to like confront him after like date three. And I was like, can you please just let me know if you want to see me again, if you really enjoyed the date? Um, Because I don't hear much from you from the week, like throughout the week. And Mm. I would love to know if you want to see me again. (laughs) So it's like been like the, like one of the biggest struggles I feel like. um, And I don't know, maybe they're just nervous. And I caught him off guard, that one in particular. And he just... He got all like super red in the face and blushy and was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I want to see you again. And I was like, okay, thanks. Can you just do that at the end of the day if you really want to see me again? Like, it would leave no guessing whatsoever for me. And I would love that. And he was like, yeah, I can do that. (laughs) I'm like, okay, thanks. Uh, But I'm normally like, I'm pretty direct with guys. I don't know, I'm 38, almost 39. So um I've learned how to date in my 30s, and I find that most men in their 30s into their 40s, which is the range that I usually date, um, they still need a little bit of help in dating. So a lot of them have been married before, or they've been single for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so if I can just communicate that to them, they're like, oh, yeah, okay, I can do that. So I guess just like letting them know my needs and stuff. I don't know. Do you ever experience that? (laughs) Probably. (laughs) All the time. I'm over here like, I have no idea what the situation is. Are we in a situation ship? Are we just friends? Are we dating? (laughs) What is happening here? Yeah. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. Like clear communication is so important. And I will preach about that until the day I die. (laughs) Yeah. One of my core values, like I, after dating that guy and ended, that was like one of the things I was like, what do I, what are like, what are my core values? Like, what are I, what am I looking for? Like in the next Mm -hmm. relationship? Um, And that didn't even actually lead to like an actual boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. We dated for a handful of weeks, but but it was like, what am I looking for? My core, what are my core values? Like, and clear communication, transparency, like I have a whole list of them. Like I have lots of lists, but, (laughs) but like, those are huge for me because I'm such a communicator myself. I can't envision myself not being with somebody who can clearly communicate with me or at least be teachable, like, and how, how I like to be communicated with. So, and if they're not, like they they're not probably a good match for me so um but that's been a lot of my dating experience has been like I don't think you're a good match for me actually so which I think everybody like yeah everybody, point of dating right like you're, you're either gonna date like it's gonna lead to marriage um or you're gonna hopefully leave them a little bit better than you found them that's always my prayer is that mm-hmm. that I would just I would leave every guy uh better than I found them. And for the most part, I feel like I I hope I did that, but I don't know. It's a struggle. (laughs) 
Amen. It is definitely a struggle. And like, I've been having conversations with some of the other women about why we think it's such a struggle on either side of the coin. Like, why are we as women struggling so much in our singleness? And then why like, do we think in, in our perception that guy, or what guys are struggling with? And it's been really interesting to see like the the themes <laughs> that have kind of come out of that, that question. Um, because a lot of it, in certain aspects, we feel like points back, at least on the women's side, we feel like it points back to purity culture mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. how, you know, like how, <laughs> like not to go on a soapbox, but you know, how all of that really just messed up, I feel like our generation. And yeah. And so I'm just curious, like, what do you think is like a practical thing that a guy can do to kind of break out of that mindset of, um, or even help his lady break out of the mindset, I guess, of like, the purity culture thing but in a still in a pure way <laughs> yeah. i guess yeah well i think like right i grew up in purity culture myself that was like what i was taught so for so long i was taught you need to wait for the man that god has for you mm-hmm. and, and my parents were great they never like they said do what you want if you want to date great we're going to support you and whatever so i never felt pressure like in a christian family uh to get married or anything like that. It was like, pursue pursue what you want to pursue. We are going to support you 100% in that way. So for me, a lot of my adulthood was spent uh, waiting, quote unquote, and also pursuing school. So I've been through a lot of school, paid off a lot of debt. And then I hit my mid 30s. And I was like 34. And I hadn't really dated And yet to still to this day at 38, I haven't had an actual boyfriend, which is it blows my mind because I'm like, what have I what what did I do with my 20s and 30s? Well, I was waiting and waiting and waiting for this one. And in reality, God's like, I don't want you to like just wait. You need to join me in that. Mm -hmm. Like have your eyes open, find out what you want, find out who you are in me first. Do all those things, like which is what it was a, such a journey, like for me, like in doing that. It started with me finding out who I am in in Christ, who I am, like who has God created me to be, who does He say He is, mm-hmm. and then from there it was like, okay, now you've got that, and you are solid. So when you go out and you date, now it's time. And I didn't want to do online dating forever. And then finally, I started listening to the Heart of Dating podcast and they were talking about online dating. I was like, oh, maybe I'll try it. (laughs) So, and then from there, I feel like God took me on another journey and it was like, let's learn how to date. It's, It's time to learn how to date and put yourself out there. And I want you to wait for what you're looking for, but be active in your waiting. Like don't, don't like be closed off um, to possibilities because you're waiting, quote unquote. So I feel like the purity culture in that regard, like it really, I have had to do a lot of undoings. It had such good intentions, I think. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of ways it was like, oh my gosh, like I could have been dating all those years and like finding out what I wanted and whatnot instead of being like, oh, I'm waiting for the one. Like, no, in reality, like God, God has has a lot of people probably out there for everyone. I don't believe in the one. I think there are better matches. Yeah. I think there are those that like God is gonna be like, that's a better choice for you because you're gonna run at the same pace and direction. Like mm-hmm. after, especially as you hit you're like you're I don't know. I feel like as I hit my upper 30s, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to <laughs> I need to find somebody who's gonna partner with me and what you know, like, what are my dreams and goals and things like that? What has God put on my heart and called me to find a partner that can come alongside me like with that, and I can come alongside them. Mm -hmm. And it's been like, very eye opening. (laughs) in that regard. Yep. (laughs) Oh, my gosh, so much. So yeah, I I totally agree. And I'm gonna be 34 in a couple months. And so it's like growing up in within that culture too, and trying to the same thing they undo all that mentality i still am like i can't date unless i'm really i see potential with this person you know and it's just like it's ridiculous <laughs> like, yeah, it it's, is it's ridiculous and you know? so then i am in part of like the last well january of 2022 to uh, just May of this year so May, May of 2023 i was like this like I need to like get out of my box, like for dating. What am I going to do? I'm doing online dating. What could I do to do that? Like Lord. And it was like, I don't know, try to land a date once per month, like with a 
Christian man who is attending church and who has a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I, I had to find them mildly attractive, like at least on their, like based on their pictures, like they had to have at least one good picture that I was like, okay, I could kind of see potential there. But And that was from online dating. And as soon as I found out that information, I met up with them like as fast as possible. So for that many months, I went on at least one date a month with a man who said at least he went to church. And I met all sorts of guys doing that. Like it was amazing. And being able to date men that I would have never dated otherwise. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm so glad that I did because it helped me form even more like, what am I looking for? And I wouldn't have known that had I not done that. So I don't know. I think God is like redeeming a lot of areas of purity culture for me, but it's been a process. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. (laughs) I know. When you've had so many years of that, just like in your head, you know, it's like, it's very difficult to get past. So yeah, I I agree. (laughs) I'm over here like, okay, Lord, how do I do this? My thing is I'm going to the meetup. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so I'm just like, I don't even know if that it is what it is. Like I'm just going to meet people and, yeah. you know, just continuously putting yourself out there and yeah. trying, to, trying to do it well. But yeah. And I have a lot of, because I did that for so, like, well, and I still am on apps. I took a break this summer, but um, I, I mean, I'm back on them right now, but like, it's been very loosely. So, but, and I don't have the same goal, goal to go on a date a month anymore. Um, I think that season is over for me. I've been a lot of, like been in prayer about it a lot. And I feel like that journey is good. Like I'm so grateful for it. I also don't want to miss out what God has for me right now as a single person, because I created so much margin to date that I kind of stopped staying in tune with who I was. So, and the things that I love to do and connections with people, because when I did online dating like that, it was like I left such huge gaps every weekend thinking I was going to go on a date, waiting for the guy to ask or for me to get to a point to suggest it on these apps. And then it might not come. And then, oh my gosh, it's been two, three months since I've seen people that live 10 minutes away from me. Mm. And I was like, I think that I swung the pendulum too far (laughs) one direction. (laughs) Because I was like, Lord, if I am doing this, I am finding a husband. Like, let's go. And then it's like, oh, maybe that wasn't his point. (laughs) Oh, shoot. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> no. now, uh, now it's time to uh, back it up a little bit. Hold for me, like hold things with an open hand. Keep my eyes and heart open. But also it's okay to plan things out because I can cancel plans. Oh my gosh. Hmm. That's what the Lord's been like speaking over my heart is like, what have you been wanting to do that you've not been doing? And um the, put those things on your calendar, girl. <laughs> so, and then I'm like, you know what? If like the Lord brings somebody along, it, I can neither bring them to those things or I can just cancel it. It's okay. I can sell tickets. Mm-hmm. I can reschedule plane flights, things like that. Like it can, or you can work it around if you're dating somebody. Like I think I just kept having this mindset like, you're going to meet him online dating. You're going to get married pretty fast because you're older. And you can't plan your life out. And it was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't think that's it at all. So I'm kind of opposite. And like, I have some big things on my calendar now. And one thing I'm even looking at is like in August of next year. And I was like, I never plan my life out that far, like ever. But I'm like, well, hold it loosely. See what happens. Put it on the calendar. If you get to it, great. If you don't, you don't. And maybe there's a good reason why. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's so funny you share all that because I did the same thing yeah. <laughs> where it wasn't trying to date that often, but it was still just like I focused so hard on the dating apps and like all the things that I was letting all these other things that I wanted to do or other responsibilities just kind of fall by the wayside. And so I'm like, yeah, that's not good. Like you need to bring it back, focus on friendships and, you know. Yeah. And not be so focused on, hey, this guy's potential, this guy's potential, this guy's potential, you know, just like Mm -hmm. see what happens. And Mm -hmm. yeah, which is another reason why I'm going to the meetup because I'm like, I'm going to go meet cool people and you never know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way. So I'm going to the Heart of Dating conference in Nashville for New Year's. And I was like, I don't even know if I'll meet anybody, but honestly, it just sounds stinking fun. Like, and you know, why not? (laughs) 
<laughs> so it all actually, it came together very quickly. And I was like, okay, Lord, I guess I'm going. Wow, I'm going. Okay. And I mean, I've got my plane tickets. I got my ticket. I got my, like, it was, it all fell into place so fast that I was like, what are you doing? Like, okay. Like, this is fun. I love traveling. I love doing that kind of stuff. And things like that, where I'm like, it's dual purpose, right? You're meeting people, but it's also something that like brings you joy. Like, Mm -hmm. why would why wouldn't you do that? Like, Mm -hmm. so, and I am such an in-person gal anyway. So even with online dating, I tried to meet up with guys as soon as possible. I think I like surprised a lot of men, like where I was like, you want to meet up? (laughs) They're like, what? Yes, please. (laughs) So because you you can't really get a feel for a person unless you meet them Mm -hmm. in real life. So, but yeah, and I mean, that kind of comes back to like the, what advice could I give to guys? If you are like talking at a distance because you're in different parts of the country and somebody says, let's meet up, like, and if you have the means to do it and the interest to do it, do it, like, mm. meet up because you won't know if your connection is going to translate in person. So I just, I don't know. I'm like loving all these different events and, and meetings. And I'm like, we should, yeah, we should get back to more in-person things because mm-hmm. that's really where people can connect I think as their whole person not just like with the screen so mm-hmm. you, can, you can kind of see some things I think with video chats but there's just something more to being in person I think so amen and that's coming from the woman who is like totally fine with long distance <laughs> relationships or dating I guess but at the same time it I need to be in person on some level because it just drives me nuts. Just the whole thing. I was like, there's going to be lots of people there. That just sounds fun. Like it sounds fun to me overall. I love Nashville. I've been there before um, driving my brother out to Virginia when we moved him out across the country. I would love to see it again. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. you know, but I mean, I love to travel too. And that was another thing that like fell by the wayside because I was spending too much time focusing on, you know, dating or whatever um mm-hmm. and i was just like nope I'm, you're gonna start traveling again because it's something you want to do and again how else are you supposed to meet people <laughs> yeah. you know yeah because yeah. i'm almost 100 percent positive my future husband is not in the state of california so no you gotta go where the nascar is <laughs> I, do. I really do i do i do <laughs> The craziest thing that was okay, it's like when I was in North Carolina, I don't remember if I shared all of this on my post that I ended back up in H24, but while I was in North Carolina, my smart self drove down to Darlington, South Carolina, two hours, okay, to go check out the Darlington racetrack. Mm-hmm. But my dumb self did not take a second to look that to see that there was a race there that day. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that drove me nuts was like, if I had looked, I would have walked my butt downstairs to the checkout place or like in the lobby, checked out, packed up my room, drove down to Darlington, got a room for the night and gone to the race because they still had tickets. Oh, shoot. Missed opportunity. <laughs> but it's okay. Less learned. Yeah, lesson go. learned. That's all that means. You just gotta yeah. go back. Yeah, exactly. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm pulling up and I'm like, why is there a lot of people here? And then I'm all, oh my God, Tiffany. (laughs) They're here this weekend. And I was like, well, there's a whole bunch of people all milling around, like getting ready and like tailgating and all this stuff. And I'm all, yep, this would have been fun. I could have met a whole bunch of cool people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's cool. I ended up going back to North Carolina and, like, met some cool people that night, too. But, you know, lesson learned. I got to look it up to see where the races are if I'm going to go traveling to see race tracks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just, like, so used to, I think, going during the off season that I just didn't even think about it. Like, yeah. I wasn't thinking, oh, hey, you know, it's Sunday. They're racing. Like, you should yeah. try to see where they're racing. Yeah. Nope, I won't. Yeah. Anyway. That was just a whole little story, but it was hilarious. <laughs> you love a good story. Um, I put that in my Instagram that I'm a, that's one of my things that I'm a storyteller, which is true. I am. So with all the guys that I've dated, like I put them on a list. I write them down like uh, dated as in went on a date or actually dated them for longer than just one date. But I want to remember, like, I want to remember w- the journey that the Lord took me on. Like, and I want to be able to like, I think I love to reflect mm-hmm. and I love to like look back and go, oh my gosh, look what the Lord did. Like I've been prayer journaling since I'm like 15. 
So on and off. And you got to burn those prayer journals if anybody ever finds them. Holy cow, all the men's names <laughs> over the years. I know. But I mean, the list of guys that I've dated, like, I'm just so grateful like for the experiences that I've had and their stories and getting to know them like uh it's been like really fun to like look back on it and I'm like look at the funny things that have happened here let's look at the look at the things that I learned like oh my gosh definitely will not do that again like all Mm. the things like it's it's such a good way for me to be like yes like all of that is not like you didn't just date and nothing came of it. Look at all the beauty that came out of it, like in that way. So it's been really helpful and encouraging like for me, like going on so many dates and not having the end result that I'm wanting, Mm -hmm. but to be able to look back and like, you know, the Lord's using that, like not just for me, but my mom always like, she's one of my biggest encouragers. And she's like, you just never know like what the Lord is doing, like using you in each of those guys' lives. And I know that you have this end goal and in mind. Uh, but maybe God's like using you right now for all these guys. Like maybe that's like what meant kind of, kind of one of the missions that he's got you on girl. And I was like, I don't want to be on that mission. <laughs> so <laughs> that hurts. And she's like, I know it does, but like you could be preparing them for their person too. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, Oh gosh, <laughs> it's like that hit me in the feels. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. Yeah, but you bring up like two great points. <laughs> One, we, I feel like we, if we're focusing on the beauty and the journey, we're not focusing on the negative side of it, right? Like that's my little sum of what you said. <laughs> um, and then two, like going back to leaving somebody better than we, we found them, you know, what can they learn from us and what can we learn from them to make us better partners for our future person? Absolutely. You Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't know just because, well, I'm definitely more on the camp that if like, even though God, you know, created me, I had this desire in my heart to be married, to have a family, however that looks, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to say yes to that desire for me. Mm-hmm. Because there's so many examples in the Bible where he doesn't say yes to that, um, where, where people wanted things and desired things, and they didn't get those things. But it doesn't mean you can't ask. And until I get a no, like you need to throw in the towel, like why wouldn't I keep going after it? Like, so if that's like something that is a desire of mine, like the Lord's going to use it either way. Mm-hmm. Either way, I'm going to either way, I'm going to have a husband or I'm going to point all these men that I've dated, hopefully more to Jesus. And that keeps me going mm-hmm. because ultimately I know that I'm here like to point people to Jesus. So, woo, got a little emotional. <laughs> now I'm crying. <laughs> uh, uh. It is like, you know, when you talk about matters of the heart, it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard as you get older, mm-hmm. like letting go of things and grieving things mm-hmm. and doing that while you're living it out is so hard. And, but also like, God is so good and kind. So all of his no's are like the kindest answer that I could have received. Mm-hmm. So if he does have somebody for me, oh man, he's going to be so good. So, and we're going to be like a dream team. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> and I, I feel that for like so many women, like that I've talked to, I, especially through the group, like 820, mm-hmm. that's a group of 30 plus people like age wise. And so many people, so many women that I have actually made more friends with women than I have with men. We're all in the same boat together. (laughs) So it's like, and if, if people are, you know, like me, never married, no children, which there's a lot of us Mm -hmm. and there's, there's people walking you know, you know, with their all seasons of life as well in that group. And it's like, we all desire to be loved and to be known and to be seen. Mm-hmm. and um yeah it just is it's just harder like I feel like as a woman like in that way so I feel like what's when it comes back to like what's super helpful and practical for men like think of our hearts when you're when you're pursuing us or if you're not sure about us let us know you're not sure about us <laughs> let us know you need some time like to think 
you know, be clear in, in what you're thinking. If you need time to think and pray, let the person know that you're dating. I need time to think and pray. I need time to like figure out if I want to take this to the next step. I've had several men do that and it has, it, them alone, just communicating that has relieved so much anxiety and angst. And I feel like torture in my head and heart. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That was a lot. (laughs) (laughs) It was a lot, but it was great. (laughs) Uh, we had a little nascar trail in there too but it's okay (laughs) um yeah i oh i have been grieving like all of the things and so i that's why i was like and now i'm gonna start to cry too (laughs) you know because i'm like oh that hurts and i know some people like oh you're still not even 34 yet and i'm like yeah but that doesn't mean that i can't grieve it (laughs) because It's still not like happening and I still need to grieve that part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at each stage, you, I feel like it's really important to let Jesus sit with you in that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been learning is like, I'm pretty much at the point now where like the the reality is I'm probably not going to, even if I met somebody and got married fairly quickly, I'm probably not going to have a baby in my thirties if I even had the opportunity to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And that's like something like I have to walk out and grieve with the Lord. Like, And I'm glad I'm doing it because it means he's preparing my heart for whatever else he has for me. But also like it's super important to do that, I think. And just because you're 34 doesn't mean that you haven't grieved that you didn't get married and have children in your 20s. Mm-hmm. When you had maybe a hopes and dreams of having that since you were in your teens. Mm-hmm. So, which has been my journey. I I never would have thought I would be still single at almost 40 here. Like I'm 39 in, in December. So, but here I am and time doesn't stop. So <laughs> it's like, you got to figure out. And then also it's, I feel like the Lord's just been really kind because um, that group in particular, 824, it's like, it's the singles group that I always wanted, like in my 20s that I didn't have, that the church didn't provide. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Um, the groups that I had the opportunities to go to, it really did feel like a meat market to me, like meet up and you get married kind of thing. And at that point in in my life, I was so focused on school. I really just wanted community at that age. And that's in a lot of ways why I am really grateful for like singles groups that I am a part of, like through Facebook, um, is that I'm not necessarily looking for a husband there i'm i'm looking for community Mm -hmm. because my own church like i'm one of few singles in my upper 30s -hmm. uh, that isn't that's dating and doing all those things there are single people of all ages in my church but like they're not necessarily dating or they're not my same age range those things so i feel like the lord's been so kind to give me like friends that um, I would have never thought I would be making like, but here I am, like I'm flying tomorrow to Colorado to meet up with two gals. So mm. from that group and it's like, wow, I, I would have never guessed that like a year ago when this group pretty much started, but like, I don't know, God is good. He's mm. good. He's good and he's kind. And he's, you know, if we listen, listen to him and Holy Spirit, like we will know when to take breaks from things. Mm -hmm. We'll know if things are not right for us. We'll know if people are not right for us and dating, all those things. I don't know. (laughs) A lot of thoughts. (laughs) A whole lot of thoughts. Um, Yeah, I I agree um, with 824 Group. I I have been missing community for a very long time, like very, very long time. The majority of my friends that I grew up with are married and got married young and have multiple kids and all that. Right. And so, um, last year, like I was in a different group. Um, I was in, I was in HOD, but it was like so overwhelming that I didn't really participate. (laughs) So I was in a couple other groups that were smaller. And then from there, I like developed other friendships and, you know, whatnot. And then, then I got into this one, I think, think late July or like July-ish somewhere around in there. And ever since then, I'm like, yep, these are my people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like this is the group that I was looking for. Obviously, mm-hmm. we still have issues, <laughs> but we're not yeah. perfect. <laughs> well, what church isn't? I mean, that's what essentially it is, right? It's yeah. a church will see like the body of Christ in as a whole, because there's so many different walks of mm-hmm. life in that group. But like, it's just a reflection of the actual body of Christ, to be honest. We're yeah. not <laughs> 
no i know (laughs) so yeah i love it though it's great it's it's yeah like you said the community that i didn't know that i needed (laughs) and yeah i mean from the other group like i've i've gotten a huge pretty decent sized group of ladies out here um that i also didn't know well i mean i knew i needed but I didn't know I needed them, if that makes sense. Like I knew I needed female yeah. friends, but I didn't know those were going to be the female friends that God gave me, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so it's just awesome that that can be a thing. Cause I never would have met like any of these people in yeah. any other way, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like I, I totally agree. I have great community within my church and my work. I'm super rooted where I am. I'm quite willing to uproot for the right person. Like, mm-hmm. but, but I am like, I've got great connections and community in that way. It was like, what I didn't have was community in kind of the same phase of life as me. Same. And yeah. it, those numbers kind of kept dwindling down more and more where I only have a handful of in-person friends um, and they all kind of have their own lives so that it could go several months without us ever really seeing each other, even if we saw each other at church. And so in in this regard, it's like, I can throw out a question and people will answer it or I can get some advice and they'll answer it. And they understand because they're going through it too. Like, it's like one of those me too moments. Like you're doing that too. Oh, me too. Yeah. And it, I don't know. I feel like God wants us in community. There's a lot of people that are lacking it in person. So online is great in that regard, but he also wants us to get in person. So if if you meet through online, get in person. Like if you, you know, and if you're not plugged into community where you are, find some in-person community to also be a part of. Because he wants to do things in community with us. He wants to bring healing in community. Mm, Yeah. I think he wants to heal a a whole lot (laughs) that we all just need to be willing to walk the path with each other in Mm -hmm. that healing process, you know, Mm -hmm. which we're all too stubborn or we're all, yeah, too stubborn for our own good (laughs) sometimes. Stubborn or not. I mean, (laughs) valid. Sometimes you just don't, you just need another person's perspective. That's a lot of just even dating, like for me, has been what do you think about that? What? Yeah. That guy is doing this. What should I do? How can I best approach him and be direct with him and not, you know, be kind to him? And I get, you know, feedback, things like that. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But yes, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. What? I feel like that should be a quote on some shirt or something. <laughs> yeah. We just need each other. Like, that's what I feel like the overall thread that like the Lord just really just keeps saying to me is we, you need each other. Like, don't try to isolate away. Like, even when you're dating, you need other people around you to see you dating that person. Like when you're, you know, when you're going through something hard at work, you need community to be able to pour into you, to tell you to keep going or give you wisdom to say, no, maybe this season is done for you. Like we need each other so badly. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But... <laughs> it's like we need to stop letting things that are dividing us divide us if they're not really issues. Yeah. <laughs> No, I totally (laughs) think that I feel like that is like something, at least within my church, that my, you know, pastoral staff has been preaching has been, you know, let's strive for unity as the body of Christ. Like, let's, let's look for more things like that can bring us together and serve one another and love each other than push each other apart. Like, Mm -hmm. so in that way, I feel like I've been discipled really well. So um, I try to do that in my own life, like when I'm interacting with other people. I'm not perfect, but yeah. Yeah. So you bring up a good point about discipling. And I feel like mentorship is the same thing. Um, (laughs) Different word. But um, I don't remember what you said on your responses, but I know that that question is in there. Like, is it important to you Mm -hmm. for your future person to have a mentor? So Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that looks different for everybody, right? Uh, I feel like it could come in various forms. I think it's fantastic if you've got somebody wiser and older walking alongside you and giving wisdom, that kind of thing, or somebody who's more um, been walking with Jesus longer than you have. I think it is wonderful if you have one specific person. Mm. I also think there is value in having a community of people that will also disciple you. And you can 
be discipled within community anyway, because all discipleship is, is coming alongside of somebody who's chasing after Jesus and and watching what they do and emulating them. Mm. So when Jesus says, "Make go out into the world, make disciples, he's saying, you're following after me, you're chasing after me, go and teach people how to chase after me. So I do think it's super important that a man that I'm dating has community and that has people that are pouring into him, discipling him. That could look like a community group setting. That -hmm. could look like mentors. That could look like parents that pour in and disciple him like really well. I think it depends on the man, to be honest, and what his community looks like. But if he doesn't have much community, I'm going to probably put that in the yellowy flag category and ask more questions and get more curious, to be honest. So Mm -hmm. because I've been discipled, like, um, like that's a big focus at my church. Mm -hmm. And um, it it is just something really like of value to me. So, yeah, I, I, I probably would date a guy for a little bit. And if I found out that he was lacking community, I probably would lean toward more the side of this might not be the right time for us to date then until you get community. Mm-hmm. So, and I've had friends that actually, one of them in particular, she did that with her husband. She was like, you're not quite at the point that I want you to be, but if you want to marry me, go out and get discipled like some more, find somebody to pour into you and get discipled and come back. And he did. And he married her. <laughs> so... I, I know that like it can be done, but like if, if you're not like already in that kind of why wouldn't you you know take the opportunity now when you have time right mm-hmm. Ooh, sorry. I think single people have well it depends on if you have children and things like that but like I do think there are ways to be discipled um and not necessarily having to uh, spend every living moment with that person but I definitely I watched a friend disciple a, a male friend uh, was married for 18 years and he just um he just died of cancer in Mm. in July. And I always kind of wondered, like, it's, you know, Lord, like you had him here for 44 years. And it's, it's sad to me that he only worked a certain job kind of thing. But as I was sitting there in his service, they talked about all the men that he discipled and met with. And those men are all my friends and they're all wonderful men of Jesus. Mm. So I just have seen it like, and I've been discipled, so I would hope and pray that if I do get married, that that man has been discipled really well, too. And if he hasn't, like, and not right now, like, that he would be encouraged and would go out and do it and would be okay with going out and finding somebody to, like, teach him how to do that. Because you need discipleship at all points in life, right? It doesn't just, not just in singlehood. You need, I mean, the people that I know that that are amazing parents, they have people that teach them how to be amazing parents. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, the the people that want to learn how to do certain things, they go out and they find mentors. So why wouldn't you want to find, why wouldn't you want to find that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly agree. And I won't, I won't get on my soapbox, but yes. (laughs) 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 I I found like, I'm going to say one more thing. I, I find that a lot of the Christian men that I have met and dated have lacked discipleship in their life. And I feel like that is a big disparity on why there's so many more single women in the church than there are single men, is that um, there's a lack of discipleship. And with that would come, hey, you like the girl, you should call her. Like, hey, you're kind of leading her on. You should give her some clarity. Those are all things like within the dating context that I feel like if you were being discipled, you'd have somebody that would be able to say, dude, I'm kind of noticing this. You might want to do this. Like, mm-hmm. and that's why, that's why I think it's super important. <laughs> so. Amen. Again, you just keep on <laughs> preaching that message because yes. <laughs> no, I found it myself. No, not quite. But, <laughs> but, but that's what I'm looking for, you know. I have a pretty clear picture of four things. It's like letting go of all the other things and letting God surprise me. Mm -hmm. I think the list gets shorter for me the older I get, but they're so important, the things that I have on that list, like of what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's like all the things. Just mm-hmm. I wholeheartedly agree that 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 is the one of the biggest issues right now that um, and not just men, but, you know, we're talking about men and what we think about the situation. So men, <laughs> um, you know, they're they are missing that that mentorship, that discipleship, that accountability. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you look, if guys like to quote statistics all the time. So if you look at it statistically. There are more women in the church than men right now. And that's a problem. You know, like, where are men? <laughs> where are they? And well, who's discipling the next generation? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's not just us that we're thinking about. We're thinking about legacy, right? Right. If we don't get to have our own children, we got to think about all the children that are around us in our life. Mm-hmm. Or if you have children, those are your disciples. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah. But I yeah, mean, it's, it's not just men. No. I, I a lack of discipleship with women, too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. not to like, you know, knock on the men, but it's men who I'm dating. So (laughs) I noticed that. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I think it's still just important for guys to hear us say that though, because they always want to know what we want or what we're looking for. And it's like, yeah, well, we're looking for this, (laughs) you know, somebody who finds the value in discipleship and community and being intentional, have, being a good communicator, like that's it. <laughs> you know, obviously a servant's heart too, but like those are the other practical things like that side yeah. of it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if only it were that simple. <laughs> right. But I have seen like, I have seen so many friends and family get married and Mm -hmm. meet amazing men who have had those things Mm -hmm. and how much healthier their marriages are because of those things. Yep. So why would you not want to do the prep work now before going to the next step where things are going to get harder? Marriage is not easy. It's a reflection. You know, it's a mirror Mm -hmm. (laughs) you all the time and points out all your sin. And basically, like, why we need Jesus. That is what marriage is, is if you don't understand, like, what the whole point of marriage is, then, you know, I don't know. Anyway, that's a whole thing on its own. But, like, if you don't understand the covenant of marriage and the purpose behind it, you're going to miss some things. And then you got to back it up even more. Why wouldn't, if you could do the work now, do it now. Like, Mm -hmm. you know. If you're getting frustrated because you're dating and you keep finding people that, like you keep running up into walls, maybe the Lord wants you to do a timeout and figure out with him like what's going on within community. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know. So but I have seen it with my own eyes, amazing men that have been discipled really well and that love their wives to pieces and would do anything for them and continue to be discipled because marriage is hard. Having families is hard. All those things like, and even if you don't get married as a single person, you should be discipled and you should disciple others because we're called to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Very valid. (laughs) It doesn't. So I don't want to get off on this tangent because we don't have much longer, but (laughs) one of the ladies I talked to yesterday, we went on a whole rant about how the church um, puts too much emphasis on marriage and, you know, it's, it's put up here on this pedestal Mm -hmm. and, you know, if you're not married, you can't do anything. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah. I I feel like as somebody who has still not been married mm-hmm. in purity culture, but is being discipled, I'm so grateful for those in the church that recognize me as a whole person, as a single woman. Mm-hmm. And also it allows me to feel empowered to give feedback to my pastors if when they're preaching, they preach only to the married people. Mm. If they talk about children and you don't actually have children. Those things like that as a single person, I can I can help others understand what it's like to be single. Mm-hmm. And also like encourage those who are single that like you are so whole and you have amazing things to do with the Lord as a single person. Mm-hmm. And And even if you didn't get married, like, you know, for a first time or a second time or, or whatever, that God's got such good things for you. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, 
Um, I feel like there's an opportunity there for those of us who are single within our local churches with a little C mm-hmm. to be um, gentle, but also direct with those and let, let, you know that are, that preach on Sundays, whoever that is. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Give them feedback because if, if nobody gives them feedback, then how will they ever know that it hurts the hearts of those in their half of the people in their body of believers. Mm-hmm. So, and actually not even all of them are believers that come to church anyway. So, but it's like 50% of the American church. I don't know if it's worldwide, but 50% of the American church is now single mm-hmm. of some capacity, either never married, widowed, divorced, those different things. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you want to teach them how to be a disciple of Jesus and whole, regardless of their marital status? You should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an endemic. <laughs> so, but what a cool opportunity for those who can articulate it, right? Right. It, to, to be able to g- give healthy feedback in that regard. So, um, and it's amazing to me, like to see the growth in my own church and the guys that have been preaching, because it started as a church plant. And I started going there at 22. Mm. Now it's been a church for 17 years and the, and the, the lead pastor there, like the growth that I have seen in him and how he preaches to not only the marrieds, but also to the people who are single within the congregation is encouraging to me because it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I can see he's, he's listening. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, it, the American church in general puts a really big emphasis on being married. Like, um, I don't know if it's like that worldwide. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it's here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's as singleness grows throughout the U.S. and we have lots of people who don't know Jesus, it would be unfortunate if the church didn't recognize like how to teach people to follow Jesus in whatever stage they're in. Mm -hmm. So you would miss a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I have such a heart for singles because I've been single for so long. So. But I'm also really fortunate that I've been at that church for so long that when I do say something, they listen. Yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. It, it makes me sad because um, we have like, we have just as much to bring to the table as somebody who is married. So, and we need a seat at the table. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> I, do. I got to attend some church meetings back when I, during COVID. Um, did some blogging for our church blog back then. And so I would attend staff meetings and they're like, whoa, we never thought about that. <laughs> I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't know. A lot of thoughts there. <laughs> <laughs> I have them all too. So I get it. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the stories and the perspectives that were shared in this episode. Please share it with a friend whose dating life might need some help. Wink, wink. If you want to connect with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at an epiph with Tiff. I really hope to see you there. There are multiple ways that you can support my show. You can pray for me, rate, review, and share any episode that you love. Or you can even financially contribute by going to patreon.com slash an epiphany with Tiffany. Until next time, I'm Tiffany, and I hope you just had an epiphany.